Hi guys, how's everybody doing? So today's video is going to be about how to prepare to live in your vehicle, whether it be a car, SUV, van, whatever you happen to have. Now if we're looking down, we have notes down here. Like your finances has a big part to do with it. Do you already have a vehicle? Are you purchasing a vehicle? First of all, you need to start downsizing because if you're like the rest of us, you have way too much. Whether you live in an apartment, whether you're renting a room, even as little as renting one room, you can have too much. Too it much felt, to live in a car. It felt like to me having a house was like, ah, uh, now that I have a house, I can decorate and I can get all these pictures, these frames. And now that I have a house, I can get a couch and do put all kinds of extra appliances in it and this, this and that. But whenever you're living from a house, to a car you or a van you you gotta downsize whether that's sell donate or just throw in the trash because a lot of stuff just isn't worth to resell or, or donate give away to somebody yeah if you have valuable stuff then you know start selling it now if you have a nice dining room set some couches an extra bedroom and all the furniture in there whatever you have that's extra that's in good to great condition start selling it now get rid of it downsize maybe you have friends or family that might need some things if you don't want to sell you know you can give it away donate it the goodwill and salvation army um has where they you can call them and they'll come pick up most of your things so if you don't even want to deal with that you can go ahead and call them and schedule a date with them and they'll come and pick everything up and that's, then that's what we did when uh, we sold our house we had a table and we had the Toyota Sienna chairs of my van that I took them out and they were just sitting inside and of course we can't pick those up so we had to call the Salvation Army I mean no it was Goodwill, Goodwill. we called Goodwill and they went and picked it up for free so yeah plus um, we had a desk and a few odd and end things that they picked up they don't charge you anything, so you're donating it, and they appreciate that. You got to use what you have already. Don't go and, you know, if you have a blanket, don't go to Walmart or wherever and go buy a, the new, the, a new blanket. So, you know, if, it, if you can use it, use it, you know. It's, yeah. it's no point of <laughs> buying stuff that you already have, you know. like. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of, like, what's the point of you moving into your vehicle? Can you yeah. not afford to live and pay rent in a regular house or apartment because if that's the case and you're struggling or your finances are kind of borderline where it's hard to pay the rent and the utilities and you know all that then use what you have especially then use what you already have you don't really need to buy anything if you already live somewhere for a while in an apartment a house you've more than likely already have all your kitchen stuff um all your bedding all your blankets pillows all that good stuff you already have it a lot of people they want to live in a vehicle because they want to just downsize everything they want to live a more minimalistic life and i feel if you want to live a more minimalistic life then don't accumulate more like for instance a blanket you know and you're gonna buy a new blanket like, I don't know, maybe you want something new to see, but if you have the money, by all means, go ahead, do what you want. But I mean, I don't see the point of, you know, being a minimalist money-wise, <laughs> you know, keep keep what you have and save your pennies. Yeah, for me, it took, it took a long time to downsize my way of thinking, to minimalize my way of thinking because way back when I would see like for example a nice shirt and I would want it in a whole bunch of colors and I would purchase them and only use maybe one or two of them and then the rest of them I would never really use it because I would end up not really liking the color and just wasting money so that was a horrible habit I had boredom shopping with retail therapy that was another horrible one i wasted too much money a lot of 
with like car living but just living in general you gotta see how you live you gotta know your habits you gotta know what you like and what you don't like you know and what routines work best for you because down to the routine this is what my mom struggles with because i've already been through the because i've been car living for a minute now and um before we had sold the house mm -hmm. i just did it part-time because you know my mom had a home base but so i had my routine down i had everything down practically um but my mom she's brand new at this so that you know she gets flustered sometimes which i understand but and you'll get that way you know like it's something new you know and change is different and change you know can have uh, either a super positive or a negative effect on you and you know you might get flustered sometimes or stressed out but you know just get in the hang of it yeah it takes time i mean we're about a month now and i'm just kind of mellowing out and finding a nice routine and finding our our uh, favorite parking spots because we got a couple of those that we really like there's just really peaceful and quiet you don't hear that many cars and then some other ones you hear them all night long so a good night's sleep is pretty important too. So that gets me into bedding. Like, are you gonna buy memory foam? You can buy it pretty cheap. As, like, as for a mattress? Yeah, for a yeah. mattress. Like you can buy it pretty cheap at Walmart or like Amazon. And a lot of those you can even cut with scissors or with, um, with a knife. To the shape or the size that you needed for the back that's how we had cut ours we have videos about it too us cutting our memory foam yeah we had got trifold mattresses which are really cool because they fold um into three into thirds and they uh you know you can put them in like for instance my mom she has a trunk so you can put them in her trunk and it'll be out the way but uh yeah we we just had a knife and mm -hmm. we just it was uh what, just the, a regular old knife and yeah we, we, we cut, cut it. the length to better fit us because mm -hmm. it was 75 inches long like a regular twin size would be but we cut it shorter so it could fit better in here we could have more space and i don't have to move my front seats forward every night whenever i'm trying to go to bed so that was really nice just don't think you know like oh if i get this memory foam mattress or whatever don't think you have to get one of those electric saws or something like that because we just use the knife you know, you know mm -hmm. saying about use what you already have because you know there's no point of getting all these little gadgets and stuff just yeah. to throw them away or donate them yeah and then it depends on your comfort too if you're a side sleeper if you're a back sleeper belly sleeper all that's going to depend on your comfort how thick the mattress is which if it gets kind of pricey and you don't want to buy another one to put on top of it you can always see if you can buy a king size and then cut it into a half or thirds depends on how um, how wide you need it and you can stack them up you can use blankets and kind of fold them and make that as padding also if you already have a ton of blankets and you don't mind doing that that's what I did on in my van I have a trifold mattress mm -hmm. and I also have these uh, egg rolls and on top of that, I have these, uh, what is it, a super fluffy, like, pillow top blanket, it feels like. And I put that on top of my mattress. I said, Mama, it feels like I'm on clouds. And my bed looks like a pillow. It looks like a pillow. It looks like a big old white cloud. It looks, and it feels really nice. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. Yeah. So, yeah, just use what you have already as far as, like, making your bed. You might have to depends on how firm you like it some people like to even sleep on the floor and they don't mind just putting a, a sleeping us. bag or <laughs> no i like i like a lot of cushion but yeah use your pillows use your blankets or if you have a sleeping bag you can use that too and then now we're thinking you're gonna have to start looking into window covers whether that's like I like 5% tint, limo tint, but uh, a lot, you know, I kind of feel like window covers are better, you know, like these right here, you can see in the back behind my mom. Mm -hmm. um, we just used Reflectix and then we had stapled black fabric 
on the side that goes facing outwards. Yeah. So that's what we use, but we have a little bit of tint on our vehicles. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't know. I like, I like the fact that we can put it, take it on and off. It doesn't take up any room if you take them down. Yeah, they're very thin, and they're yeah. easy to make. They're really cheap and affordable. Okay, so another thing is like if you have bags or boxes or bins depends on your vehicle again everything's going to depend on your vehicle your personal likes and dislikes all that you can have bins you can have backpacks soft-sided bags you can have suitcases boxes you name it whatever you want you know just make it fit wherever it's convenient to you in my because i've done car living in two cars oops no three cars yeah three cars and then um, two of them are on my YouTube and then also I have my van which is what I have now and the cars which I still use in my van I figured that the back backpacks or soft sided bags are like the best ever I like utility bags people always ask oh what are they um, where's a you know where can I find those kind of bags and uh, we, on Amazon, if you look up utility bag, they'll pop up. It's a soft-sided bag with a bunch of different pockets, and it's really nice. And I like those because they, you can, if you, even if you empty them out, you can roll them up and they'll fit anywhere. Yeah. And you can, you can make them smaller versus like a milk crate or a container. You can't really move it or squish it to fit in a certain spot. But see, in my van, I have both. I have the soft-sided bags and I have uh, milk crates and containers. So that works out for me because I have the space. But if you're in a car, I recommend that you just use uh, the soft-sided bags or yeah. a backpack. Yeah, you can do backpacks, you can do totes, you can do duffel bags. There's a whole array of things, even like the shopping, um, reusable shopping bags, you can just anything. And more than likely you already have bags you can use. You can even use pillowcases. If you have plenty of pillowcases and shams, unzip those and you can stuff things in there too. I mean, go to the thrift store and look around there too. They always have bags. Yeah, they always have bags. They have dishes, they have pots, pans, cups, anything. If you don't, if you absolutely don't have anything, then that's a cheap way to do it. The thrift stores. Dollar trees. Dollar tree is cheap enough. Um, and then garage sales, things like that. You, know, you can find them cheap. You don't have to pay a lot for anything. Or you can ask somebody. I was super minimalistic and I only used three bags. Mm -hmm. I had one for food, one for clothes, and one for hygiene. But now, you know, living in a van, I have room to put like all of that stuff. So, but plus I have more because, you know, I have the room, why not? But um, I recommend you get a hygiene bag, a clothes bag, and a dirty clothes bag, which I use a pillowcase. But, uh, and for food, I mean, you just set it anywhere or have a bag for it. So yeah, I mean, you can have a basic three bag system, which is basically a hygiene bag, which could be like your gym bag or just with your basic hygiene things that you're going to go to a gas station and clean yourself up and then you need a clothes bag and then a dirty clothes bag because you need to separate that you don't want your stinky clothes with your clean clothes you don't want your stinking clothes just out yeah or you know that would suck that yeah. would stink My yeah bad. stink so minimum i would suggest three different bags a three bag system then above that you can always add like a food bag a kitchen bag um, a prepping like a bug out bag yeah a bug out bag or um, like to keep it minimal because you're in a vehicle you're not going to have you know, buckets full of food or you're not going to have a ton of containers of water or anything like that so a bug out bag can minimize what you need but in a smaller amount so that's also helpful if you can fit that in there those three really are the minimum amount of bags. Then you have to think of your budget. Um, are you on a limited budget? Are you working? Are 
you know you you have to figure out your own budget and how much you can spend and all that especially when it comes to food mm -hmm. because you can you are able to cook on the road like in your car or you know but mm -hmm. uh also what a lot of people do is they eat out mm -hmm. and that even goes for coffee in the morning people instead of making their own like my mom would she got a membership at panera mm -hmm. and which is eight no it's like nine dollars a month yeah and uh even right now she gets three months free which is cool but uh it's nine dollars a month and she can have unlimited coffee unlimited tea mm -hmm. and they also have hot water there which you can also use like i did today i had a packet of oatmeal i used one of their cups and i poured my oatmeal and then i poured that hot water mm -hmm. and i cooked it yeah. so so it's that, handy it's it's really plus handy. they have outlets so mm -hmm. i figure for ten dollars a month it's well worth mm -hmm. having all the coffee that i need plus outlets plus bathrooms um, bathrooms a nice environment you can stay cool or um warm just depends on the climate and just go and relax in a nice you know a nice environment versus just being stuck in your car if it's bad weather let's see what else where can you park mm -hmm. that's a big thing about where can you park during the day and where can you park during the night mm -hmm. so if you have a night shift job which a lot of nomads do because you can't just park anywhere during the night and so at night a lot of people they they work at night so they can park at their jobs and then during the day they can go sleep at like a park or some like walmarts and stuff like mm -hmm. that because now walmart you can't sleep overnight there yeah, you a can't lot park of them overnight you can't. yeah but what i was thinking of doing is working the evening and that's typically the hottest part of the day work anywhere from noon to four or five somewhere around there's when i would like to start working and then about up to about 10 p.m you know somewhere in that time frame work a few hours through that and then during the day it's not as hot and you can park anywhere and then during the hottest part or the well not the coldest part but the, i guess the hottest part of the day you can be working indoors somewhere so you don't have to worry about running your ac you know if you don't have a hybrid it makes a big difference you're yeah. going to be spending a lot of money in gas just to run your ac if you don't have any kind of power battery system or anything like extra like that and that's something you have to consider too is a lot of houses either have ac units heat heaters mm -hmm. and uh, when you're car living unless you have a hybrid for the ac for a long time or i don't know if you just want to have your car on for the ac or the heater you know you gotta take in the amount of gas you're going to use up and the wear and tear on your vehicle yeah, you have to start thinking alternative ways to keep yourself cool and keep yourself warm. I have a video about to keep myself cool. There's like uh, battery operated fans. If you have a small power system, you can always plug in like a 12 volt appliances or you can um, just go as simple as spritzing some water on your face and on your neck. And then as far as like keeping yourself warm, it's just layer up. You have to layer up, you know, put, maybe you even have to have a long sleeve, then a vest and then a jacket, and then maybe a blanket if it's extreme cold. Have your hat, your gloves, and. We can make videos on it too, if you guys want. We can, we can, uh, that's more videos for us to make you guys to watch. My mom, she was uh, watching some videos about these uh people that put uh what are they called uh, inverters inverters in mm -hmm. the priuses yeah so. if you have a hybrid you can um attach or connect a uh, inverter like a thousand watt inverter i think into your 12 volt battery and that 12 volt battery is then connected to your hybrid battery system so you can have your car on and the battery will just kick on and off as it needs to. And once your car is on with that inverter, you can plug in um, a lower wattage appliances. 
because I have an Instant Pot and I would love to be able to do that. I'm gonna look into it some more and then um, be able to put in an inverter to my 12 volt battery and can hardwire that and then only use it after I turn my car on, plug in my Instant Pot and you can even plug in a microwave, a low wattage microwave and use it for those few minutes that you need it. Yeah, what, what I have is a, a rice cooker and we also have the Instant Pots. We can go to like parks or different areas that have uh, plugs and yeah. uh, we can plug in our rice cooker and cook right. stuff or heat stuff up. Plugs are everywhere. Plugs yeah. are everywhere. You plugs just have to find everywhere. them. You just have to keep your eyes open. They're yeah. everywhere. And a lot of them, they don't even mind like parks. They, don't, they mm -hmm. won't say nothing. You can plug it in and use it for like 10, 15 minutes. That's all it really takes to cook something. But there's also uh, propane and butane stoves that you can um, you can buy there you have the the coleman yeah i think it might be a coleman i have to look and see but i have some videos about that too where i show you how i cook or basically just heat like soups and heat uh water things like that but i have a butane stove and that's really handy and it's compact it fits right in front where cora's sitting so you can do that too that's easy enough but yeah, you have to just kind of think and see, are you going to be eating out more? Are you going to be trying to cook your own food? Are you going to be able to store um, leftovers if you have a cooler? If you can afford to get a cooler that's a little bit thicker? Any kind of off-brand that'll say four to five days of ice retention, I would recommend those because you can buy um, a bag of ice at whatever grocery store for a couple bucks or less and put that in there then you have almost a week's worth of refrigeration so that's cheap enough to, to even if you have to buy it twice in a week that's like four dollars that it's costing you and you might not always have things that you need to put in in your cooler you can always have like um, peanut butter fresh fruits and vegetables go shop for the day go shop for like a couple days we had got a cooler, it's the Igloo brand, mm -hmm. and it's a really nice cooler. And um, inside of it was this little, like, uh, what is it, like a, a basket. basket? It's a basket, and I, not zip tied, but I bungee cord it on top of my, uh, my shelves that I have in my van, my little containers. And so I made that my fruit basket. Mm -hmm. And also, so have where I can put my fresh fruit and vegetables in there and then I can put anything that I need to uh, have cold inside my igloo. Cooler. Putting in there is um, like deli meat or a rotisserie cheese. chicken, cheese, some dip, some um, potato salad that's already made. We have even cooked some things and put leftovers in there and just kind of reheat them a little bit. It just depends what you what you like to eat because mm -hmm. you may not even need a freezer, you know? Yeah. No, if you have a rice cooker, a small rice cooker, I think Cora's is 300 watts. So any smaller um, solar generator can definitely power that rice cooker. And you can cook in it, you can uh, heat water up in it, and it's it's just like basic. You can heat up soups, we've done that a few times, um, fry eggs boil anything really how are you going to shower or use mm -hmm. the restroom that's one thing that is a big reason why a lot of people have a gym membership mm -hmm. which a lot of people like planet fitness because they're everywhere yeah and uh they they the planet fitnesses that i've been to are fairly they're good they're clean and they're they're pretty good yeah you can get your your exercise on get healthier and then go get a shower and if you're in one area and not really traveling from city to city or state to state you can purchase the membership just for that one gym that one facility and it's for me it's ten dollars and ninety cents so eleven dollars a month and now Cora has the what is it twenty three I have the black or, card which yeah. is uh, twenty five dollars yeah and it's because I travel a lot, so I'll go to different areas and mm -hmm. where have Planet Fitnesses, and I'll park there. I'll 
use their restrooms all the time. They have water too, mm -hmm. water dispensers. You can drink their water. Also, uh, yeah, their showers are, are great too. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, my mom, and also you can bring a guest. So oh, yeah. my mom, she can, you know, whenever she is not at the area where her Planet Fitness is, she can just cancel her membership and use mine. So th those are the two memberships that we're keeping. My coffee, my Panera, um, which right now I have three months of free coffee, unlimited coffee. Then once those three months are up, I will more than likely keep it going because that's just convenient. I don't have to worry about buying propane or having water or switching my system back and forth to cook or anything like that. At least for the morning when I'm first waking up and all that. But those are like the basic things that you really need to do in in order to prepare to live in a van. Well, the way I see it is uh, also is if you already have your vehicle, play with it. See different layouts you can do. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the minivan. When I got this minivan, I was like, what? Because I can do so many different layouts and I was having fun trying all these different layouts. And I mm -hmm. think I found the one that works best for me yeah but i still want to change it sometimes i don't know i still think about changing it yeah but yeah right now right now i feel like it's good yeah and that's normal a lot of us like to switch things around even when we're in an actual house or apartment i would always like to turn my couches around and lay have different layouts and also with my bed my bedroom i would put it in different walls and just switch stuff around just because i used to like doing that and then I would clean while I was doing that too, so. And like whenever I was uh, doing my little car living stuff, mm -hmm. I, what I would do, so I would just sit in the front seat and recline it all the way back. That's what I would do and I'd sleep like that. But my mom, she wants something more comfortable. So, yeah. so she has her bed back there. And it depends on the type of car that you have, whether the seats go all the way down and they're flat because mm -hmm. um, I had one that was a Hyundai the back seats didn't fold down flat like I needed them to mm -hmm. so uh, we had a trifold mattress and we put two out of three of the little sections it comes with and we put them on the bottom or the towards the trunk where it goes lower and then the seats go up higher and I only put one and that was like perfect right there yeah but you can always stuff like pillows or blankets or like extra clothes to lift it up or mm -hmm. you know something like that yeah so. you just have to get creative and yeah kind of think and see what do I have that I can use to make this work that should be the first thing that you need to train yourself what's that that one you told me that quote the something is mother of all necessity or something like oh that. i think in invention is the mother of all necessity something yeah. like that i can't remember exactly what it is but yeah you start like if you need something and you don't have the funds or the time to go look for it or you need it right away you start looking around and saying okay what can i use what what oof, what can i use okay maybe i can put that here and put this here put it on top of each other you know you just start kind of thinking what you can use to make um, what you need already because most of us already have everything that you need and for like your basic necessities also like mentally preparing yourself to not live a normal life to live alternative an alternative lifestyle prepare for the haters <laughs> that's I don't know I don't play pay too much attention to it but there will be haters People that will always have their opinion and they're say. entitled to their opinion as we have our own opinion, but their opinion doesn't have to define you or what you do. You have to be a little bit strong minded. I don't know about y'all, but I ain't hurting nobody. I'm not hurting nobody living in my car. I feel good about it. I feel better than living in a house. I feel more productive and everything. So I don't care what people have to say to be honest yeah you good. have to get a thick skin because a lot yeah. of people will comment like when you're making videos and showing people how you live or what you're doing they they'll have their own opinions which that's fine you have your own opinion and i have mine no problem but also like your friends your family they'll be concerned and they'll be you know lecturing you and 
telling you you shouldn't live this way or you shouldn't do that or you shouldn't do this and why are you doing this why are you doing that why can't you just live like a normal person you want to be like a bum blah 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 i mean it's just you hear it you you will hear it so just be aware of that too but you have to be content with yourself love yourself and realize why you're wanting to live in a vehicle in a car in a van in an suv anything like that you have to know your why and then the rest will just kind of gradually come and with time it gets easier you get your momentum going you get your routines going all that so just don't abuse your self-care that self-care is number one don't abuse that because a lot of people they feel destitute living in a car mm -hmm. i mean if you're watching this video more than likely you want to live in a vehicle or mm -hmm. you're interested in it so it's not like you had to you know it's not like you have to survive living in a car it's more like you wanted to you know but well, don't abuse huh? well a lot of people will start looking into these videos because they're about to get kicked out of their yeah. apartment or house it's or they true. lost their job and they're trying to figure out different ways of how they can live very cheaply very frugally so we're gonna make more videos on how to be more frugal even when you're shopping like we had a video uh, a shorts showing how we were eating ice cream for 25 cents a piece we or save money because we don't have a freezer mm -hmm. and we save money because we didn't get the big old thing of ice cream which we don't even eat that much ice cream but see the way i feel about it if i did get that big old thing of ice cream i would have wanted to eat more than what the serving size was mm -hmm. so i'm saving my calories i'm saving all kinds of stuff yeah so yeah just keep your eye open and have a thick skin and know your reason why those are i think mentally the the top things that you have to think about and then physically is all the other stuff we had just said you know make sure you use what you already have and um don't go out and buy anything if you don't need it because more than likely you already have everything you need except for maybe like a memory foam type of deal if you have to because you can't really cut a mattress a traditional mattress you can't cut it and put it in there but other than that i mean you can still use um blankets pillows all that to kind of temporarily to see if you like it but yeah like cora was saying go and take weekend trips go and take day trips night trips go find a a parking spot and just sleep there overnight see how you feel and just start trying it out little by little and then gradually do it a couple nights or gradually go for a full day or two without going into your house and see how you feel about that because sleeping in your vehicle is one thing which is only a few hours and you're not even awake to like feel what it actually feels like to be in your vehicle mm -hmm. you know try to be in it in the daytime a lot of people have jobs like normal nine to five jobs so it takes away from you know the uh, a lot of people they feel bored or non-productive but see like for me it's 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 fine because uh, my work is to draw so that's what I do I draw I make videos that's Weird. what I do so I'm steadily productive and mm -hmm. I always have something to do digital nomad mm -hmm. if you work Monday through Friday then do it on the weekend and see how you like it and just start trying it out little by little and you know go camping and all that but yeah there's even a you can even try well it depends where you're going to be because a lot of people they like to go camping mm -hmm. and you can go camping all the time then but uh most people they'll be in an actual city or town where mm -hmm. their work is mm -hmm. so it's not like you can i don't know some people are able to but it also depends on your money but um so i say if you're gonna try to live in your vehicle try to live in a in your town not really to go camping for a little bit i mean mm -hmm. you can try that too but that's not really going to give you the feel for it as yeah. if you were to be in your actual normal day of life yeah so just try it out where you live find your spots where you think it's legal or legal enough to park and legal enough yeah legal <laughs> enough to park some places will let you park 
overnight and some won't. Some you have to just legal ish parking. So yeah. But yeah, guys, we hope you enjoyed the video and all our thoughts and advice to how to prepare yourself to live in a vehicle. Maybe our next uh, video for this series is going to be how to actually set your stuff up or what you actually need to start to live in a vehicle. Like we'll actually show you, we'll go to Cora's van and give you examples and we'll go to mine and see, or even um, how to prep in a vehicle because I still do that. I'll show you how I prep and where I put my things in a vehicle. So, all right. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.